and Last Week by Marcus Borg and John Carlson is a book that covers what the Gospels teach about Jesus' final days in Jerusalem. After detailing every day from Palm Sunday through Friday of Holy Week, Mark says nothing at all about the Sabbath. He notes that Jesus was crucified and buried on the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, 1542, and he picks up the story on Easter Sunday with the finding of the empty tomb. The only mention of a Saturday event is from the Apostles' Creed, which simply records, he descended into hell. It is sometimes rendered the harrowing of hell. Harrowing is an old English word for robbing, and hell is not a place of eternal punishment, but the Jewish Sheol, or Greek Hades, the grave. What might be the meaning of this mysterious action? As Mark and the other evangelists set out to describe Jesus' execution, they were working with the Jewish tradition that had always emphasized how God vindicated those righteous Jews who remained faithful under persecution and were ready, if necessary, to die as martyrs for their faith in God. There were two main models that differed according to whether God's vindication occurred before or after death. The first model provided salvation at the last minute before death under persecution, as exemplified by Daniel being tossed into the lion's den. Daniel is saved and restored to his former glory, and his accusers are devoured by the lions. The second model, taken from the Book of Wisdom in the Apocrypha, a book written shortly before the time of Jesus, shows divine vindication of salvation only after death. It states, let us lie and wait for the righteous man because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. The author continues, but the souls of the righteous are in the hands of God and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. It is, of course, the second model that is presumed behind the gospel stories of Jesus' execution and vindication. The book of Mark contains several prophecies of death by execution and vindication by resurrection. They will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. As the authors of the last week explain, the tradition holds that Jesus descended into Hades or Sheol to liberate all the righteous ones who had lived for justice and died from injustice before he himself had lived and died a similar destiny. Jesus rose for those first Christian Jews to lead God's corporate vindication of all the righteous ones with and in himself as the supremely righteous one. There are two scriptural references that seem to bear this out. The first is in 1 Peter 2, 18 and 19. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits. The second is in 1 Peter 4, 6. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. None of Holy Week would mean very much, nor have any significance, were it not for Christ's glorious resurrection as the week comes to an end. As Saturday passes, the stage is set for this incredible event.